Okay, we are also live on YouTube. All right, so let's open up the meeting and start to bring the applicants in. Oh, we're just still waiting on the applicants for the first item. I have okay. to tell you, it's very cute here in uh, Park Slope, across from the park, watching these little kids drag their sleds <laughs> over to the park. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> I wish I had my flexible flyer from when I was a little kid. <laughs> okay, the, the attendees are uh, ready. Come over and get it. <laughs> yeah, you still see a few of those out there, though a lot of people just have a plastic, uh, you know, dish or something now, but, you know, it's nice to see the old ones. Oh, it's great. I think we have our applicant now, Sarah. Okay, great. Okay, so welcome back to the afternoon session of the February 2nd public hearing, public meeting day for the Landmarks Preservation Commission. We are um, in our public hearing agenda applications for work on designated properties, and we are going to be beginning this afternoon session with item number two. And I will turn it over to item number one, excuse me. We'll turn it over to Corey Harala, our Director of Preservation, to lead us through the agenda. Thank you, Sarah. Um, as stated, item number one, uh, we'll begin with that, LPC 19-41363, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Brooklyn, block 1258, lot 49, 294 Albany Avenue in the Crown Heights North 3 Historic District, a Renaissance revival style row house designed by Lewis Berger and Company and built circa 1902. The application is to, legal, is to legalize modifying a window opening at the rear facade without LPC permits. Uh, commissioners, the um, applicants have joined the hearing. Uh, please note that staff will be presenting components of this application uh, and the uh, attendees are, sorry, the applicants are available for questions and staff you may begin. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners, Elizabeth Fagan, preservation staff. As Corey mentioned, the item before you today is to legalize a modified opening at a visible rear facade. Uh, this property is located on the west side of Albany Avenue between St. John and Lincoln's Place in the Crown Heights North 3 Historic District. The commissioners are reviewing the installation of sliding doors at the parlor floor, which you can see up here on the left, which were installed without permits. Uh, these doors do not meet staff level rules due to visibility of this enlarged opening from public thoroughfares, uh, which I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, note that the removal of this stucco installed without permits, as well as some restorative work at the brick facade, will be handled at staff level. Other work being handled at staff level includes the installation of a deck and replacement of windows and doors at the basement and upper floors. Uh, these photographs here are taken from Lincoln Place, uh, where you can see the top of this modified window opening over this one-story garage here. Uh, so just to point out, you'll see the top of the opening here on the lower left, as well as on the upper left, um, and some zoomed in photos as well here and here. Uh, prior to work, this parlor floor opening featured a double hung window with segmentally arched brickwork at the lintel. Uh, the applicant is proposing to retain the existing doors in the current size and location uh, and are in proposing to install arched brickwork over the existing opening to be in keeping with the conditions at other window openings at this facade and other buildings in this row. Uh, so you can see that here in the elevation on the lower right. Uh, the small area between the new arched brickwork and the top of the door will be finished in a white stucco to match. 
Uh, this slide here is a photo montage representing the views after corrective work uh, is completed and the facade will be painted to match existing. And again, the top of the window opening is here. Uh, this is just a slide showing the existing sliding doors that have been installed, as well as some photos of uh, the existing rear facade, which is here on the right, um, with other rows, uh, the rear facade of rows uh, in this block. So again, this is our property here and the other existing conditions of these rear facades. Uh, so this concludes the proposal and the applicants are here and available for any questions. Okay, all right. Commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicants? All right, um, would the applicants like to say anything at this time? Um, no, I, I think that was very well presented. Okay, thank you. All right, so yes, Commissioner uh, Goldblum. We have um, any uh, record of approving vinyl windows? I, I can take or that one. Yeah, yeah the, okay. actually the, for staff level window replacement, the rules are extremely flexible when um, the, the window or door in question is not visible from a public thoroughfare and it's on a secondary facade. It, it, there is no prohibition on the material of the window themselves. Uh, and really the same goes for a visible secondary facade, it's really only a requirement to match configuration and finish as in the color essentially. So while we don't see many of them for a variety of reasons, there, there is no staff level prohibition of them. Uh, the commissioners, you, you all have seen them a few times, almost always in the context of you know, uh, an applicant asking to legalize work done without permits. Uh, and I think the record is mixed on how that's turned out. But um, you know, I think the, the, the hierarchy that the staff uses is usually kind of the criteria you all would look at as well in terms of is it visible and so how much and what type of, of a facade does it occur on. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions? Okay, let's see if there's public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to speak, please raise your hand so we can identify you and um, we'll start with anyone who signed up in advance and I'll turn it over to Lisa Kersavage to walk us through the testimony. So I'll actually be taking over for Lisa. Um, we do have uh, some people who signed up and I will first bring in Simeon. Okay, you should be in the meeting and you just have to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Simeon Bankoff, Historic Districts Council. Simply put, this window opening is an inappropriate size and design for this 120-year-old historic building and historic district. It is glaringly visible from the public way and would never have been approved if brought before the Landmarks Preservation Commission as a proposal. We urge the Commission to deny this application and work with the applicant to correct this mistake. Okay, thank you. And then I will bring in John Graham. John, you should be in the meeting. You just have to unmute yourself and turn on your camera if you wish to. Good afternoon, commissioners. John Graham from the Victorian Society. This proposal for the rear wall of the building maintains the height of the historic masonry opening restores the surrounding brick facade, introduces a conforming brick arched lintel, is only partially and minimally visible from the street, and otherwise will have a minimal effect on the rear yard of this and adjacent buildings. Therefore, the Victorian Society in New York believes the work is, as proposed can be found appropriate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we didn't have anyone else signed up and I don't see any other hands um, people trying to testify. Okay, thank you, Anthony. And Rich, do we have any additional written testimony? Yes, we do. We received a resolution from Brooklyn Community Board 8 recommending approval and a letter in support from the Crown Heights North Association. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Um, 
I, I think because there were some comments about uh, some negative comments, while much of it was supportive, I just want to give the applicant an opportunity to respond if they wish to. Um, no, uh, no, no, no. Okay, thank you. All right, commissioners, any final questions? Okay, and I'm starting to request to unmute all of you so that we can close the hearing and begin our discussion. So please uh, check to accept that request. <coughs> okay, and Commissioner Bland, would you make a motion to close the hearing? I'll move. <clears throat> And Commissioner Lutfi, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. And, um, you know, in terms of material, as Corey pointed out, there in, uh, for both non visible and visible secondary facades, the staff rules, if the, if the work met the rules, there would be no prohibition on material or particular vinyl material. Um, so, but this, um, you know, window is before you today because of its size exceeds the amount that the rules can approve for a visible opening. So the applicant is proposing in addition to modify the work by including an arch that would relate to the other arches on the facade. So let's um, have a discussion about the proposed work in the context of the rear facade and and as it's viewed from the street. So Commissioner um, Holford Smith, would you like to start this one? Yeah. Sure. Um, I think given its its minimal visibility and the inclusion of the brick arch, I would be okay with um, accepting this. Okay. Um, thank you. One thing I'm concerned about is the fact though that they stuck out around the whole opening. So I'm not sure if they're preparing to repair the brick, which is shown on the elevation, which would be- Yeah, they, I, as I understand it, they are, yeah, they're working um, with the staff to resolve the stucco on the rear facade at staff level. So they should be able to address that at, at that time. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right, Commissioner Chapin. Uh, um, I think this is minimally visible and uh, I can approve it as presented. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Goldblum. I don't disagree with those comments, but I do think that um, vinyl is crap. And I think that we generally try to, apart from the design and appearance, require of applicants a certain level of construction quality commensurate with the uh, quality of their building, their existing building, and I don't think vinyl would rise to that level. Uh, I, I, I would not vote against this for that reason, but I would urge us to consider the rules that would allow for uh, this kind of product on a historic building anywhere. Okay. Commissioner Devonshire. I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Goldblum about the vinyl. I would hope that our very qualified staff would try and dissuade owners from using what I consider to be a very substandard material. The other issue that I have is um, I don't think I have a complete explanation about what's going to happen with that stucco. Did they did they cut the bricks back a foot away in each direction so that they also need to uh, reapply bricks? on the surround and um, I mean. Right, it's, it's following up on Commissioner Holford Smith. I'm concerned, unless they, unless they recreate a surround of brick masonry, then I'm, I'm not willing to uh, approve it. Okay, and Corey, I don't know if you wanna add anything in response to that. I, 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 am, I don't know the particulars of it other than the, we understand the intent is to do the proper reinstatement of the brick with the inclusion of the, the brick arch. So we'll, you know, we can ensure that that is the work that is done at the, uh, at the perimeter of the opening and not just a, a stucco parging on top of what's already been done. Okay, Commissioner Chen. Sorry, I trouble trouble unmuting. Okay. okay. No, I agree with uh, Commissioner Goldblum about the inappropriateness of the vinyl uh, and the rest of the comments. 
Okay, but but he did say he would vote for it in this case because the rules would actually allow the windows below it to be replaced right now in, in vinyl. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay, Commissioner Bland? Yeah, I'm on the same bandwagon, um, partly because it's so minimally visible. Okay, Commissioner Lutfi? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I'm okay with it, but would prefer that they, it not be vinyl. I just want to bring something else up, and I'm guessing it's being approved at staff. But if uh, this uh, brickwork above the door is, uh, um, is being installed, I'm just going to encourage the staff to look at the door and window on the bottom, because I'm assuming you are approving this for consistency. Right. I believe that though, yes, but I think those are being uh, an eligible, being reviewed and eligible for a staff permit under our rules. I know, I know. Yeah. Okay, all right, Commissioner Jefferson. <clears throat> I can approve this, but the, the issue for me is you have the shallow arch and the location of it in the facade <laughs> in relationship to the edges are so odd. Could someone, could they, is there any reason why there couldn't be a better alignment with the with the arch in the center of the panel? I mean, I mean, no one can see it, but it's just annoying to see simple alignments that you know, that, that can be done and not done. Okay, you know. we'll see what we'll see if there's something that can be done there. Okay, all right, Commissioner Gustafson. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement with uh, Commissioner Devonshire. And Commissioner Shamir Barron. I am in agreement with, with um, Commissioner Devonshire as well. And uh, it, are we also approving and are they proposing this um, rail? Or was that something that they've removed? I, I may have missed that. I'm sorry. That railing is, a, is, is an item not visible from a public thoroughfare and would qualify for staff level review. It's, uh, it, I think they're turning what's not now a usable deck into one by introducing those doors there with that. Yeah, clearly deck. that's what's going on. I just didn't know if it was part of the proposal. It, it's not, that, that, that component is not part of uh, what the commissioners are reviewing. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you all. I think we have um, enough to support this application, um, but I think we wanna make sure that they continue to work with the staff carefully on the brick treatment around the opening and at the arch to make sure that um, the brick is resolved and the arch is an appropriate proportion. So um, Commissioner Holford-Smith, would you make a motion with that modification just to continue to work with in consultation with the staff? Um, those details. Yes. Uh, in the matter of LPC 1941363294 Albany Avenue in the Crown Heights North 3 Historic District. A Renaissance Revival style row house designed by Lewis Berger and Company and built circa 1902. Application is to legalize modifying a window opening at the rear facade without Landmarks Preservation Commission permit. I note that the building's style, scale, materials, and details are among the features which contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Crown Heights North 3 Historic District. I recommend approval with modifications, finding that the work did not destroy significant architectural features, that only the top portion of the enlargement of the parlor floor window opening and the installation sliding doors is visible from limited vantage points over a one-story garage building along Lincoln Place that the width of the enlarged opening is in keeping with typical modifications to rear facades at row houses and does not call undue attention to itself. That creating a shallow masonry arch over the enlarged opening will bring this insertion closer to other historic openings at this rear facade and that the stucco between the head of the door and the arch will be difficult to discern. And that the applicant will continue to work with, um, with staff to remove unsympathetic stucco around the opening, which detracts from the facade, and to ensure that the arch is a proper proportion and the brick is carried all the way around the perimeter of the opening. 
um, and that the work will not detract from the special architectural character of the building or historic district. Okay, and Commissioner Chapin, would you second that motion? Second. Okay, and Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. And Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. Okay, with 11 in favor and none opposed, the motion carries. Okay, so that's approved with those modifications and just please continue to work with the staff. I know that your intent um, was to make that relate better to the rear facades. The staff can continue to advise you on how to do that. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. And we'll move to the next okay, we'll hearing item. This is LPC 20-04817, item number two. This is a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Brooklyn, block 5113, lot 11, 152 Stratford Road in the Prospect Leopards Garden Historic District. A colonial revival style freestanding house. And the application is to legalize alterations to the front and side facades and porch without LPC permits. Commissioner, as the uh, applicant has joined the hearing, uh, please note that staff will be walking you through the components of this proposal um, and the owner will have a brief statement at the end. And staff, please unmute yourself and um, you may begin. Good afternoon, commissioners. Marcello Pacheco, preservation staff. I will walk you through the components of the proposal. The owner is also here to give a brief statement and answer any questions. This item is 152 Stratford Road in the Prospect Park South Historic District. The application is to legalize work completed without Landmarks Preservation Commission permits, including alterations to the front porch and portico and alterations to the front and side facades. Proposed corrective work as part of this application is to remove the porch handrails installed without permit and install black metal picket handrails to match the existing railing at the porch. To the left, of the ha uh, to the left is a photo of the house from the time of designation and on the right is a current photo of the building's east and south facades. The previous white siding was removed and replaced with blue vinyl siding and white trim. Note also that the porch at the time of designation featured brick cladding and paving and black metal picket handrails. The porch was modified with the installation of concrete block cladding and stone paving and railings with composite posts. We'll get a better view of that in some of the photos later in the presentation. The 1940s tax photo shows a light finished historic siding throughout with white painted trim around the windows and a full width porch and portico with paneled wood fascias at the base and no handrail at the steps. Zooming in, here are some of the previously noted alterations at the porch, including gray and natural finished stone pavers, concrete block at the base and handrails at the steps. As mentioned earlier, the applicant an applicant has proposed to remove these non-compliant handrails and replace them with black metal picket handrails. Here are views of the vinyl siding at the side facades. Pictured here are Google Street View images showing the work in progress, revealing the underlying condition of the facades in 2019 and 2018. The vinyl siding from the time of designation had been removed and the historic wood was exposed and repainted at a portion. These are earlier street views images from 2011 and 2012, again showing work in progress and details of the underlying conditions. Pictured here are some of the immediately adjacent buildings to the south and north, featuring a number of different types of alterations at the porches, uh, non-historic cladding and metalwork. In conclusion, here is an overall view of the front facade and porch. The owner will now sp uh, speak briefly and is available to answer any questions. Hi, I'm available. Please state your name for the record and you can speak. Uh, I'm Doreen Quinn Giuliano. I don't know how to get my face in there. Sorry, I see no picture of me. Okay. Can well, you... we can hear you, so please go I've, ahead. I've given you, um, I've asked you to turn on your camera. You just have to hit okay. We can see you now. 
Um, so this took me eight years to put together. I tried to restore it to its natural beauty because that's something that I would be very proud of. But as we attempted to uh, repair the wood, it just continued to crumble. And um, yeah, the porch was lifted. It, it had some water was getting into the basement. So that had to be lifted. Uh, all the slate, the original slate was taken off and then put right back on. I have to say that the railing, I wasn't pleased with it either. The contractor removed it and then replaced it with that white PVC. I wasn't pleased with it, but I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I guess that's the truth. So I left it and I'm more than happy to change it back to its original railing. Any other questions? Okay. So Any the front, I'm on, what do you call that? The portico that was restored, pretty much just painted, uh, you know, uh, and, and repaired and the emblem that was on the front, uh, you know, restored it. As you can see, you can't even, can't even see it. And the pillars also were cracking. Those were all repaired. Okay, thank you. We do have some questions. Commissioner Goldblum. So uh, thank you for joining our meeting. Um, when you got to the house, did it look like what it shows in the Google Maps, a Google Street View there with the white paint and the uh, the shingles or whatever it was? That's that's how it looked when you got it. <laughs> um, the white, yes. The the side the the siding, yes. The vinyl siding, correct. Right. And so that was in 2018. So this work was happening between then and now, right? Um, 2018. Uh, it yeah, like that's right. That's right. Exactly. Okay. But it was taken off. My husband had taken it off and found the wood underneath. And he, this was like 10 years ago. Yeah. And he was trying to restore it to the wood because he took off all the siding. But every time, like there was pieces that he was able to restore, but then there was other pieces that just crumbled. Right? It just crumbled. So, so how'd you get to the decision of, of junking it all and going to vinyl? because the wood kept crumbling no matter some pieces were good on the side of the house it was good and then there was other pieces when you try to sand it and, and paint it they just fell apart i guess that that was 100 years old but so then we got a divorce it sat like that for eight nine years and i had to take a loan out to get the money to fix it it was really a, a hardship a real hardship so i was like the house you know, it was, a, it was a sight for sore eyes, my house, for many, many years until I got the money to repair it. But I, believe me, I would have loved to do the wood because the wood is gorgeous. But there was no way I could do the wood. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Okay, not seeing any questions at this time. I think we'll move to testimony and we may have more questions after that. Um, and I do see a couple of hands raised. So if you'd like to speak on this item, just raise your virtual hand and we'll begin with anyone who signed up in advance. And I'll turn it over to Lisa to walk us through that testimony. I'll be, I'll be doing testimony. Um, so we do have two people who signed up to speak. And um, I will bring in John Graham first. John, um, you just have to unmute yourself and turn on your camera. Good afternoon, commissioners. John Graham for the Victorian Society in New York. The VSNY cannot support approval of any of the changes which the applicant is proposing to legalize. Changes which are almost a textbook case of the ways a landmark can be damaged when a building owner fails to follow the law. We found the Google Street photos taken in 2011, in 2018, and in 2019 provided by the applicant to be very informative. 
noting that sometime before 2011, the modern siding in place at designation had been stripped off. One can see that until 2019, the historic narrow clabbered siding and the arched dormer windows with the keystones on the third floor were substantially intact. The pictures also show the sensitive way the front facade was modified when the original porch was removed by the addition of a wide horizontal board below the sills of the second floor windows to cover up any damage to the areas where the porch had been anchored into the building. The brick cladding which replaced the masonry at the base of the porch was in place at designation and seems an acceptable material for building of this age and style. And finally, the photos show that between 2018 and 2019, the house was painted, uh, painted white, an appropriate color for a house of this period. The existing condition photos show that all of this original material with its interesting trim work and texture has been either concealed or lost, leaving the historic entrance portico and front door looking like leftovers from another building. The scale and color, the scale and color of the concrete block enclosing the base of the porch do not seem appropriate for a freestanding house of this age and style. The detailing of the aluminum siding resembles the material used for freestanding industrial sheds. The dormer windows have lost their arched heads and their keystones. And while a stair railing, which would match the railings which now surround the porch, could possibly be found, it won't bring the building any closer to its original appearance. The VSNY recommends an aisle. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. And up next, um, I have Simeon from HTC, which I will bring. Okay, you should be in the meeting now. You can start whenever. Simeon, are you there? Simeon, I believe you're on mute. I am on mute. I thought I unmuted myself. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you very much, Anthony. Um, Simeon Bankoff, Historic Districts Council. HTC notes that in the historic photograph provided, there's a nice wooden balustrade, which is no longer in evidence. In truth, the historic photo should be used as a guide to correct what has happened to this poor building. As is often the case, we do not believe that the Landmarks Preservation Commission would permit these changes if proposed legally, and the same standard must, must apply here. The metal railing on the porch is completely unacceptable. The aluminum siding on the facade should be replaced with wood and proper materials, and we are frankly bewildered by the prominence of the bright white downspouts. Thank you. Thank you. We do have um, some other folks who've raised their hands. I will bring in Lori. Lori, you should be in the meeting now. Yes, hello. Um, yes. Okay, I have nothing prepared, but I must say I am a neighbor and I am a uh, past community board member of community board 14 for the past 40 years. Um, this house was in complete disrepair. It was an eyesore for the neighborhood. Uh, I understand the need to keep preservation as I also live in a historic district, but given today's cost constraints and remodeling in terms of pure historic value are absolutely enormous. You're talking about a single woman who has very limited resources. I believe the work she did was absolutely lovely. It's definitely an improvement. It, if you don't have a, a comparison in front of you of the pictures, one would not realize that it was out of place. Uh, it's totally appropriate and it certainly enhances the neighborhood. I would ask the commissioners to please be pragmatic, understand the circumstances and grant a little leeway in knowing that it is a major improvement for the area. Um, I thank you. Thank you. And we have one other person who's uh, raised their hand and that is Edward and I'm bringing him in now. Edward, you are in the meeting. You just have to unmute yourself and um, turn on your camera if you wish to. Edward, are you there? Oh, can you hear me now? 
Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Edward Casarino. I live around the corner from Miss Giuliano at 60 Turner Place. Uh, I've been there about 10 years, and I do recall seeing this house looking like it was ready to collapse. Uh, she did, uh, for a single woman, I did, she did a great job, and I think it, it really is a big improvement. And, uh, you know, if, I think we just, uh, it, it looks great, and it, it might not match every house in the neighborhood, but it is an absolute big improvement, and I think we should uh, take that into consideration. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That um, is it for um, people wishing to testify. All right, thank you, Anthony. And Rich, do we have any additional written testimony? We do. We've received four letters in support from other nearby neighbors and Brooklyn Community Board 14 Wade review of the application. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so um, I'd like to actually turn back to the owner and see if you would like to respond to some of the comments we heard in testimony, particularly with res respect to the materials and their appropriateness in the district and details. Yes, okay, so now I bought this house in 1991, I believe. 1991, so I'm not sure, but I thought I heard one of the commissioners or somebody say that there was a major um, changes, which wasn't true. So I, I could have gotten that wrong. You have to look at the pictures from when I purchased the house. I didn't rip nothing off. If anything, stuff fell apart. But I didn't change the windows. The windows are exactly the same. And I'm not sure of those, what he was speaking about, the top windows. Maybe you could repeat it for me. What did he say that I changed the structure of the windows? I didn't touch any windows. So can okay. you repeat so I can understand more clearly? Yeah, I, I think if there was a comment that the windows at the dormers at the top floor have changed, I think your your response is that you didn't change the size or, or windows, uh, in the windows within the opening, correct? Correct. I didn't touch okay. those at all. That is exactly how they were since I bought it in 1991. Okay. And we, we can see the designation photograph on this slide next to the current photograph. Okay. So, yeah, I lifted the porch, re put the slate back, changed the railing, and put on the siding. That's all I did. All right. All right, commissioners, do we have any final questions? Okay, I do see there's a hand raised. Anthony, is that somebody who already spoke, maybe still has their hand up? No, that's a new person who just raised her hand. I can, okay, uh, bring, I can bring them in. Yeah, why don't we allow her to speak before we close the hearing? Okay, Victoria, I am bringing you into the meeting. You're in the meeting now. You just have to unmute yourself and turn on your camera if you wish to. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Anthony, we can. All right. Just remove them. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much. All right. So we'll we'll uh, move on here, and I think um, commissioners, if there are no final questions, we'll start to um, unmute everybody so that we can take a motion to close the hearing and begin our discussion. So, uh, Commissioner. Holford Smith, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. And Commissioner Jefferson, would you second that motion? I so second. All right, thank you. And all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion now. Um, and so this is, you know, again, another situation, a yeah. situation where um, somebody, a homeowner was um, 
trying to maintain their property and invested in work that they believed was um, in the best interest of their property. And um, it was done without the benefit of our guidance and our, our process. And so we are, it obviously can't be approved at staff level. It's before us today. We're going to be looking at um, the placement of the vinyl siding that was there at the time of designation um, and we, and installing new vinyl siding. Um, there was exposed wood in the period in the interim, and we've heard comments about that, the condition of the wood. And then um, also the changes to the portico, the railings, and the porch, um, and the change in materials on, on those features. So um, we'll begin our discussion on um, both the, the facade as well as the porch work. Um, Commissioner Devonshire, would you like to start? Not really, but I get that. <laughs> I'm, I'm slightly confused, Sarah. Did you say that the vinyl siding was on there at the time of designation? So there was vinyl siding at the time of designation, it, and they took it off, and they were, um, I think, hoping to restore the wood. The wood was deteriorated, and instead of replacing it in wood, they put new vinyl siding up. And, and at no time was the LPC uh, consulted for any of this work. Yeah, Marcello, you'll have to confirm that and whether there were permits in the first instance that didn't get amended or whether the, none of the right. work was, that was approved uh, by us. Work. And then that was uh, existing vinyl siding at the time of designation. So that stuff in the picture okay. with the white is vinyl siding? Um, I, I, it's not currently existing at the building, obviously. Uh, I believe we, I spoke with the, uh, the homeowner and that was the, that was the case previously it was vinyl siding removed to expose the wood. And then obviously new, new vinyl, new siding installed it that we see now. And it, it could very well be that it was a metal siding, but it was definitely a wider lap than the wood clabbers that are presumably in the historic photo from earlier than that. So I think it's maybe unclear exactly what it was, but it was a synthetic siding at time of designation covering the smaller exposed uh, wood siding. Uh, <laughs> so there was an artificial siding on the facade of this house at the time of designation. It was replaced with artificial siding, but without the assistance of the LPC. So I <laughs> The question is, would this have been approved had they come to us with an application to replace artificial siding with artificial siding? That's and correct. In, in, in my book of adjudication, what I would have said is if you're replacing it with another artificial siding, then the artificial siding that would be appropriate would be a cement board, not vinyl siding. And so what I would say is I can, I can live with the changes on the porch, although I, I agree that the, the vinyl uh, balustrade on the steps should be replaced. But I believe that the vinyl siding on the front facade of the building should be replaced either with wood or with cement board. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Commissioner Chen. Yeah, so this is a tough one. This is, a, uh, you know, you have the, uh, the, uh, the historic photos that you couldn't, I'm not sure exactly if it's, that's the case, uh, but I, I take the applicant's word for it. And so I'm in the same, uh, 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 quandary as the uh, rest of the commissioners about, you know, what do you do with a case like this? But uh, but I can I can accept it uh, given the, um, the the you know the, the, the current situation. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Bland. Ay, ay, ay. Well, I think Commissioner Devonshire actually um, asked the questions and then and then framed the argument in a way that I understood it better as well. Um, it seems so harsh to say, rip it all off again and put 
a new material on. But if you take away the uh, sympathetic homeowners polite, which is hard to do, maybe impossible to do, um, then you would go with what Commissioner Devonshire said, which is um, Hardy board or something like that would be a more appropriate uh, material. So I guess I'm trying to be dispassionate and say <laughs> that's what this house, which is a handsome house, which has apparently been through the ringer and back, uh, or still in the ringer, uh, trying to bring it back, um, replacing it with the, the right sized um, clapboard uh, whether it's wood or some synthetic material, I suppose is all right. Um, I don't know. It's just a quandary. So anyway, I, okay. I guess I'm in that camp. <clears throat> all right. Commissioner Luffy. This has been a rough day. I know. <laughs> maybe, we shouldn't, maybe we should put all of these things together. <laughs> um, <clears throat> This is okay. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, it, do you see the, the bottom window um, on the front is not a one over one window? And was that window one over one when the, or are, were those windows one over one to begin with? My understanding is that the enforcement department determined those to be the uh, condition at the time of designation. And I think as the owner stated uh, that she, she had not replaced any of the windows. So that designation photo shows iron work in front of those particular windows, making it difficult to see what was back there. But I think the determination was made that, that those were the uh, conditions at time of designation. Okay. Um, yeah, this, this uh, building was really lovely, especially when it was built. And it has elements now that um, have retained its handsomeness. Um, but there are some things that are big problems. I actually, not only do I think the railing going down the st stairs has to be changed, but I I'm having a problem with the railing um, at the top of the stairs that goes around the front of the house. There it, designation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have enough weight to, um, I don't know, it doesn't have enough weight to uh, balance out the, the structure of the house and, and I just, I don't think I can approve that no matter what. Um, of course, I would love this to not be vinyl siding, period. Is there any way that, how long does vinyl siding last? <laughs> I know this is probably- a beyond, beyond, beyond the, um, uh, what do they call the era that we're in now? The human era? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well beyond <laughs> when cockroaches have won and we are all dust. Okay, so maybe we could, um, maybe a good solution would be to replace the siding on the front of the house. Um, and, and allow the vinyl siding to remain on the side, since it's not as prominent. I, I'm just trying to come up with some solutions here. Yeah. Stop, stop smirking, Michael. Um, I also, <laughs> I also, I have to say, this is a minor thing. The front door has to be painted. Um, so that again, it's not, there's not something that is glaring. I think the, and I mean, that's my, those are my suggestions. Okay, all right, thank you. Commissioner Jefferson. Uh, um, you know, if, if we just replace the front facade with cement board and leave the other three facades 
the way they are, it would, especially it's visible on, on the sides. Uh, I, I don't think that's going to help it much. I mean, help the structure of this building much. And I, um, it, it's almost seems to me to just leave it the way it is and, 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 and work with the, with, with the, with the entry, you know, maybe the, the, the metal railing is so weak. It, is there any way of bringing it back to some dignity? Because I, 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 I would just leave it pretty much the way it is. And, and I, I have no solution for this. I, there's no way that I, I think putting it on the facade would not help much. And leaving the sides the way they are, I don't know what I would do. So my right. position is just leave it, you know. And change the handrail. It would be nicer if it would wood. I mean, it would just give it some heft at the base. But that's my, my thoughts. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Gustafson. Um, I, I I think I agree with Commissioner Devonshire. I think he, I, I thought he was making the same suggestion that Commissioner Lutfi made, which was replace the uh, material on the front of the house and that's it. Um, no, I think he, Commissioner Devonshire, I believe you were talking about all of the facades, correct? No, no just the front? Just the front. The, just the front. the principal facade is, is the most important. Okay. Okay, so uh, and and and, and, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, uh, the the aside from the railing that goes down the stairs, the rest of it was there at designation, right? So we're not even on that. That's correct. That that railing around the perimeter <laughs> of the porch was there at time of designation. Okay, so okay. then I agree. With, and I agree with Commissioner Devonshire. I'm done. Okay, Commissioner Shamir Barron. Sarah, she's she. I think she had she's to use stepped that. away. Okay, Commissioner Holford Smith. Uh, yeah, this has been a tough day, um, but I think I agree <laughs> with Commissioner Devonshire that um, replacing the front would at least bring it back to a closer semblance of its original proportion of the of the um, siding. Okay, Ace. and and the railing. Um, Get rid of the and, and uh, the, the stoop composite. railing. Yeah. Okay, and Commissioner Chapin. Uh, I, you know, I really appreciate the fact that this owner is trying to do the best they could. It's too bad that they did not, you know, interact with us so that we wouldn't be at this point. Um, I uh, think that the front of the house really does need some kind of non-vinyl planning, you know, that looks more like the original. Uh, as many other commissioners have said. Um, I feel less concerned about the railing, but I, returning to the original, obviously the applicant said they were willing to and everyone else uh, feels that that you know, would be an improvement. I actually agree with Commissioner Lufty about a minor point, which is that having the like very red door is calling attention to the house in a way that's not particularly helpful to it. Perhaps it could be something like a burgundy or something, which would still achieve the same uh, sort of color, uh, you know, palette in effect that the applicant was looking for, but with which would not, you know, would fit in a little better, be a little more harmonious. Uh, something no one else has mentioned that I'm concerned about is those are roof drains, right? Are they coming down right down the front of the house? To me, those yeah. are more intrusive than almost anything else. And I'm wondering if those roof drains couldn't be off to the side or something, um, you know, instead of coming right down by the pillars, because I think that actually disrupts the front of the house more than almost anything else. So, you know, I'm throwing in another issue there, but it's, okay. uh, it, it was very striking okay. to me because there, it is a lovely house, really. So those are my okay. comments. All right, and Commissioner Goldblum. Okay. Um, well, uh, I agree with with the general sentiment to uh, to modify the front facade and leave the sides alone. All I would suggest in, to kind of uh, add to that is is that they look very carefully at both the 1940s tax photo and at the photo that shows what this house looked like. 
before or underneath the metal or whatever siding that we see in, the, in this designation photo and use that as a template for how the hardy board is uh, applied, that it just shouldn't be slathered on like paint, but that it should have a level of detail similar to what we saw in the previous image, go back to the previous image there, where you have a level of development that one, recognizes the fact that there was a porch there, two, breaks it up and makes it more horizontal, three, adds some detail around the dormer windows, all of which you can do for nickels and dimes in, 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 in Hardy Bork. Um, and what you also notice with this is that the, the, the leaders are placed directly on top of the corner boards, which makes them a lot less noticeable. Um, even if you stick with the blue and white palette, it will just be a lot less garish. I mean, this was a lovely, lovely house. And the other thing I would say is the use of concrete block, dry laid concrete block for the porch, that is not in my limited understanding a historic material. <clears throat> and um, I would suggest that it be uh, either covered over with stucco or with uh, wood uh, or, or, with, or with the hardy board. If you look on the 1940s tax photo, I believe that they had like blind segmental arches in them and that tied into some trim elements. And, you know, people talk about railings, building a railing out of wood like that doesn't cost a whole lot. You know, it's just a carpenter in a couple of days and, and you can do it. And it's, it should not be a major cost thing. Th that said, I, I, I think that in light of the, uh, the melodrama associated with the with with this project, I think we can give them a long long time to turn it around. Okay, thank you. All right, so I think that um, where we are is that the majority of commissioners could support an approval with modifications um, to replace the vinyl siding on the front facade with a fiber cement board or wood, and um, to replace the porch railings with. Uh, the appropriate material as well, and to um, reconsider the paint color for the door. And I think in addition, we can ask them to explore the finish of the concrete block around the porch and you know, encourage them to think about replacing the, the fence that was there at the time of designation. Um, but I think the approval for the modification is primarily the replacing the siding on the front and the railings on the stoop and um, and we'll work with them on trying to encourage the other changes. So Commissioner Devonshire, would you make that motion? I'll try. <laughs> it's mostly there for you so in, the, in the document. In the matter of LPC 20-048171152 Tratford Road in the Prospect Lefferts Garden Historic District, an application to legalize alterations to the front and side facades and porch without LPC commission permits, I recommend approval with some modifications, finding that the removal of non-historic siding did not destroy any significant historic fabric or building feature. The new synthetic siding at the side and rear facades does not call attention to itself or detract from the significant historic features of the building. That the historic underlying wood siding is deteriorated beyond repair. That the replacement siding at these facades more closely recalls the scale of historic collaborate siding which had been covered prior to designation. That the adjacent houses on this block are clad in a variety of materials, not all of which are historic. Therefore, the change in material on the secondary facades does not diminish the overall character of the block. That the porch, porch and porch paving were heavily altered prior to designation and recladding the repave and repaving of the prior constructed porch eliminated unsympathetic alterations that detracted from the significant architectural features of the building that the applicant will remove and replace non-historic handrails at the porch steps with a simply designed black finished metal handrail, thus eliminating unsympathetic alterations that detract from the significant architectural features of the building. That the masonry block cladding is plain and non-decorative and the pavements of cladding are neut neutral finishes that do not call undue attention to these features. And that the proposed work will not diminish the special architecture of character 
or historic character of the buildings or the prospect leverage historic garden. However, I find that the vinyl siding of the primary facade calls undue attention to itself and detracts from the significant historic features of the building, as does the replication um, handrail at the stoop. Therefore, I recommend that the vinyl siding of the primary facade be removed and a material that better relates to the material of the historic house be installed in its place, such as wood or painted fiber cement board, and details trim and finish of the new siding be refined in consultation with the staff as, as well as the step hand reps. Great, thank you. And Commissioner Chen, would you second that motion? Second it. Great. And Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron, not present. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? <laughs> Commissioner Lutfi, you're on mute. Aye. Thank you. And Commissioner Holford-Smith. Aye. Okay, with 10 in favor, none opposed, and one not present, the motion carries. Okay, so that's approved with those modifications. And as you continue to work with the staff on the details of the, and the materials for the siding and the porch, please also consider the, the rest of the railing that was there at the time of designation. It's maybe an opportunity to address that as well. So we'd encourage you to think about that as well as the, the finish of the concrete blocks. Thank you. And we'll move to the next item. The next item is number three, LPC 21-04301, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 15, lot 7501. 17 Battery Place, the Whitehall Building Individual Landmark. This is a neo-Renaissance style office building designed by Henry J. Hardenberg and built in 1902 to 04, with an addition designed by Clinton and Russell and built in 1908 to 10. The application is to replace entrance and fill. Commissioners, the applicants have joined the hearing. Uh, please state your name for the record. You now have control of the presentation and you may begin. Hmm. So Alexander, you just need to click on the uh, title screen that you see there, and then you can advance to the presentation. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. I'm, uh, can, I, can I go back? Uh, here we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Alexandra Cuba. I'm a, a director of Fogarty Finger, and I would like to present um, uh, the removal and replacement of the existing ground floor storefront at 17 Battery Place. 17 Battery Place is um, located at the south tip of Manhattan, a prominent uh, location overlooking Battery Park, a neo-Renaissance style building, beautiful, and has, because uh, of its uh, in, uh, uninstructed uh, uh, light and air, uh, also a very visual and very visible um, location. So um, quickly, a, a little historic journey. Um, it was built, as already mentioned, 1902 to 1904, and it was a success uh, in terms of office buildings. And um, they decided right away to, once this was completed, to add an extension, which was built 1908 to 1910. So this little uh, red square shows you the scope of our, um, of our work which I'm going to present to you right now. Just quickly give, taking you a little tour of how it looks today. So coming from Battery Park, you see like the three uh, arched um, um, moments in the beautiful limestone facade. On the left here is the residential entrance and the middle and the right is the commercial entrance. So you see in, a, in, a, in the middle here, there is a little pathway because the storefront um, was pushed back I unfortunately don't know when that when that happened, um, but the, uh, at the designation um, in 2000, um, it, I think it was already in process that the whole facade was pushed back. And so the whole storefront we are replacing is not at the front, it's actually in the back. So you can see on the right side, the entrance to the, um, to the um, uh, commercial entrance. 
So quickly taking you a little bit on a tour, once you step up the stairs, you can see that there is more or less an eclectic uh, visual here of the storefront. I think it was changed over time, adjusted and uh, hodgepodge a little bit. So you can see this, this pathway connecting to the residential lobby. You can also see uh, this big beam transversing that, that facade, which is a beam where we probed it and it's actually not needed anymore. It's like kind of a leftover uh, if we re uh, remove that storefront. You also see here like a, a little ceiling popping down. So it's like lower, then it pops up and then it, it has this little walkway. So it, also you can see uh, some additional lighting here and it looks a little bit like, you know, um, it, it, it definitely needs some uh, some love and some um, redesign. So our client who is a very good steward of the, of the of the building asked us to look at this and clean it up and and make it uh, a bit uh, not only cleaner and simpler, keeping it modern and timeless. But uh, as we are not touching anything of the front, beautiful front facade, we're not touching any historic fabric. Our approach will be uh, more on the modern side and the clean and simple side. Um, you can um, here see from, from the other side of the street, these are the elements we're gonna take out and replace. Um, also this big beam transversing this, this, this view here. These upper windows are to remain. So what, we, what we're trying to do is a little bit taking, no, um, taking notice of what was there before, which is this, this um, um, dark bronze aluminum windows. And um, right now you can see a brass here, stainless steel here. So we really want to bring back that, uh, that old kind of finish here, the dark bronze. And also getting a bit inspired by the historic photos that there, is, there should be more of a marching kind of, of uh, million with a higher horizontal million to kind of do a kind of uh, a nod to the historic uh, situation. Also here you can see a little close up of the entrance, a lot's going on, lower ceiling, light fixtures and a beam which then kind of goes from white to, um, to a smaller beam and some, some kind of other su support. So all of this we are planning to remove also this this higher ceiling, this lower ceiling here and really clean it up and, 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 and really not take away from the facade, rather keep it quiet and calm and simple to, to uh, enhance this, this beautiful facade and not have like this beam running through it. So that gets me to our proposal. So as you can see here, we're really trying to uh, simplify it, clean it up, still have a million with a higher million here, which allows us to raise the entrance, give also the entrance a bit more of a, uh, of a, uh, of a bigger, bigger moment. Uh, also, um, refinishing those uh, those railings here also in this bronze in this uh, in this dark uh, bronze metal and and creating a very symmetric kind of um, storefront in that kind of frame which which uh, is set back and it's a bit more quiet and really um, really stresses more the facade and rather than uh, the storefront so really trying to clean it up rather than um, uh, creating something loud in the background so the also existing stone outside here, we're bringing it in and, and calming it down. We're not doing anything to the historic limestone. We are taking, a, uh, we're taking notice of the existing window front finish and uh, making this storefront a, a dark anodized uh, aluminum storefront to really matching this finish and creating a more cohesive look. So uh, here, just quickly a look at how this looks once it's cleaned up, the ceiling is consistent, the, the storefront is just a marching clean uh, uh, millions with a higher um, horizontal million and a very simple um, uh, revolving door. So in the end, we're replacing the storefront at its current location. And this is just a look back. And as you can see, we, we, uh, we're really trying to clean this up and creating a bit more, more uh, homogenous look. Um, quickly, plans and elevations, as you can see where the old storefront was, it's here, how this is actually um, looking at the, at the elevation. And then when I show you the new one, it's the location doesn't change, but the storefront just becomes a simpler and cleaner version of, of what was there before. Um, and 
last but not least, I'm I'm also showing you the elevation from inside, which is probably not so important for you, but we um, we can show you that we also removing this kind of dropped ceiling. It was kind of a leftover from from renovations over time and really creating a more more cleaner um, ceiling inside and also outside in the pathway and also the uh, kind of giving back of the views from inside outside without this big obstruction which we had before and um, in, in overall client is very happy with the result and I'm hoping um, you know uh, it also improves the historic elements and this is just a very regular uh, stick system in aluminium you can see here details uh, typical details and um, and you can see it's just very um, very uh, clean and simple so that actually concludes my presentation. And um, yeah, if I have any question, I'm happy to answer. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions at this time? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raised. So we'll move to testimony and we may have questions after that. So if you're in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand so we can identify you. And I'm gonna turn it over to our Director of Intergovernmental and Community Affairs, Anthony Fabre, to walk us through the testimony. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we do have one sign up and that is John Graham and I'll bring him in now. John, um, you should be in the meeting. Good afternoon, Commissioners. John Graham from the Victorian Society. Uh, the applicant for this project is proposing two distinct changes to this individual landmark. One which the VSNY finds totally appropriate and a second which we see as a major lost opportunity. The appropriate work is the removal of the undistinguished modern storefront infill set behind the historic masonry openings from two of the three entrance bays. The lost opportunity is the applicant's proposal to install equally undistinguished modern infill in its place. The photographs which the applicant has provided clearly show that the historic infill at the three entrance bays was made up of wide framing members and mullions which closely matched the proportions of the framing and mullions still in place at the arched tripartite windows above the eastern and western entrances. In addition, the framing at the ground floor appears very similar to the proportions of the frames at the historic paired windows on the upper floors. We have attached a photo dated 1905 to our written testimony that more clearly shows the original infill. We recommend that the applicants redesign the proposed storefront infill based on the design, proportions, materials, and details of the historic storefront infill and of the historic window framing members still in place at this individual landmark, thereby resulting in an entrance that conforms stylistically to the rest of the building. When the modern infill at the third entrance bay fails, the revised design may be used as a template for new infill. Thank you very much, commissioners. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see any other hands raised, so I think that's it for testimony. Okay, thank you. And Rich, do we have any written testimony? We do have a resolution from Manhattan Community Board 1 recommending approval. Okay, thank you. All right, um, would you like to, I'm gonna turn back to the applicant. Would you like to respond to the testimony? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm um, trying to understand a little bit. Um, they are requesting to replace it to its original location. I think they think this is a missed opportunity and would like to see the infill be returned to the openings. Yeah, yeah I uh, only know that there is also an ADA lift right now here on this side built. And uh, I think all the all this work was done on a different application, landmark application. And this hallway also is now used as an ADA entrance to the commercial uh, lobby. So I think it, uh, it's it's. Um, it would be a pretty, probably a pretty under, a bigger undertaking to create and move everything to the front as it has other implications. Okay. All right, commissioners, any other questions? Okay, so I'm gonna to start to unmute you. Oh yes, Commissioner Lutfi, please go ahead. Commissioner Lutfi, did you have a question? 
Oh. Mr. Leffy, you're, you're still muted. Am I still muted? Now you're, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, so I'm just wondering in, uh, for the applicant, in looking at trying to improve and unify and streamline the front of this building, both in terms of the storefront and the entrances, why, why we're not looking at a, um, both doors on, the, on each side of that storefront? Because it looks like what you're presenting is three different openings here, or three different, um, you know, two different doors and a, then a different storefront. And I'm, I'm not a hundred, I'm not understanding what the rationale is behind that in terms of enhancing what's there. Yeah, I think it's probably is, um, you know, financial that they now want to do this, this, this portion because it's two different entrances as residential and, and commercial and pro probably because you're also going for this very low traffic time. Right now there's a DMV. They wanna really take advantage of this low traffic uh, situation and do a renovation of the lobby and hence the storefront, like make this right now and, and focus on that side. The client actually mentioned that they are open to uh, refinish the residential side to match the, to match the commercial side. Um, that was actually raised once we already um, had that application in the works, so we didn't add that, but with our you know, LPC um, um, contact, they said we can add that later on. Um, it's just probably financially that we, we can, it's a, it's a big undertaking to renovate that lobby and the storefront that they will focus on this now. And then uh, once time comes and they, they wanna redo the storefront on the residential, they will follow what we have done on the right side to match also the, the finishes and, and, and the look. For, for now, what you, you see now, you have three different uh, walls. So you have the brass, you have the stainless steel, and you have the old existing uh, bronze metal aluminum finish. So what he's trying to do is to, to at least do the first right step and, and, uh, and creating a better entrance on the commercial side, and then uh, hopefully eventually also follow suit on the other side. I think it's a timing and financial uh, um, situation here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yes, Commissioner Jefferson. Um, two questions. One, is this a master plan? Is that what you're saying, that if we approve the right-hand side of the image, the left-hand side will, will be exactly the same? So this is a master plan for dealing with the whole entry. That's A. And B, the alignment of the new and the existing, they're slightly off. Why is that? Well, the thing is that what we did is we this is this is a this is a higher million because it was before it was was in the middle. So looking at historic photos, there is a the, the, the horizontal million is higher. So what we did is in order to not be totally off, we aligned the million with the top of this of the residential million to still tie it in, but create a create an overall. Uh, more a reference to the historic look uh, situation than just following this lower horizontal million, which in the end proportionally just seemed odd to have this million running in the in the center of the uh, in the center of the square. And, and, and if you look at historic uh, photos, the horizontal million was higher. So we wanted to take the opportunity, raise it, also create a higher a revolving door here, and still you know be be aligned with this as a top and the top of the beam. So, so that means that when you do the left-hand side, the residential section, you have to follow that exactly if it's going to, if the facade is going to be. So yeah, essentially, this is a master plan for that. Right? Yes, I would assume, yes. Commissioner Jefferson, this, this application before you, though, is not for a master plan. It is only for the approval of this 
two thirds of. No, I, I understand that. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to make a consistency for the future. So, right. you know, five years from now, ten years from now, the alignments will be off. Now, so, in terms of the facade itself, um, the whole proposition of this facade, I'm just trying to make it so that we're sure that at some point the alignments would be right. That's right. all. Uh, you know, perhaps we could maybe also look at a photograph to just sort of understand how you perceive these relationships. You know, they're up the stair and then behind the arc, arc, what is now an arcade. So just to sort of understand how you perceive these relationships, it might be helpful to have a photo. And in the meantime, we'll go to Commissioner Holford Smith. Yes, my question, actually, these photos are good because um, in this image on page five, um, you can see that there's like a dropped infill at the stone surround. Looks like it's on the, the two outer outer um, openings. And it, perhaps it was put there in relationship to this drop ceiling. And I wondered if there's an opportunity now to remove that. It looks like it was an added. If you go to oh. page uh, five. This, yeah, yeah, as you can see it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see it in, in the right-hand photo as well. It looks like it's an added, maybe stucco within the original masonry opening. I mm -hmm. wonder if that could be explored to be removed. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You may have to do a probe to see what's, what's there. It's called out as an existing stone portal to remain. Right, but it doesn't, I don't think it's stone. I think it's probably stucco. Or it could have been faced in stone when they did it, but I don't think it's original. The one on the left-hand side is not as deep. You see, it's yes. there, but it's not as deep. Mm -hmm. That's probably something doable. Yeah, that okay. would be great. That would help. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so I don't think if there are any, if I think, <laughs> There are no other questions. We'll um, move to close the hearing and begin our discussion. So Commissioner Goldblum, would you make a motion to close the hearing? Move to close the hearing. And Commissioner Bland, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, hearing is closed. All right, and um, Commissioner, Commissioner Barron, oh, sorry, Commissioner Jefferson, would you like to start this one? Um, yeah, I, it's a provable when I saw it last night and I looked at it. And, and when I'm look, looking at it today, I was concerned about the symmetry of the central bay and whether the future would be, the, the symmetry would be there. Um, if that's the case, I can approve this and the alignments are all correct. And I do think that uh, my fellow commissioner came up with a good point of trying to remove some of the extra pieces of surface and fascia that's there. Um, it, that should be studied some more, I think. Okay, great, thank you. Commissioner Gustafson? Yeah, uh, bottom line is I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of this um, as is. Um, I think it's, uh, doing a, it's cleaning up a lot of mess that is there currently. Um, and, uh, and and it is setting a precedent for the, the third bell. So I okay. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Holford Smith. Yeah, I think this is overall it's an improvement. Uh, it'll it'll make it a much quieter um, background, and hopefully the stone will read more prominently. And I just encourage the applicant to look into removing those inner portals um, and help for the cleanup of the, uh, the stone masonry. Okay, and Commissioner Chapin? Uh, I actually feel a little differently on this one. I, I do appreciate the effort to clean up and uh, use the bronze and also the interior changes and, and the intent that they have, I think is excellent. But, you know, from my point of view, I would really like to see it reference the historical uh, condition a little more, which would mean uh, the center transom uh, over the uh, front, the entry door would uh, 
would have the same configuration as the two sides. And there would be somewhat heavy, and that the framing that comes down would align with those upper, uh, upper transom uh, muttons, I guess they are, uh, so that they, there, was, there was more relationship between the top and the bottom, and that there would be somewhat heavier framing in the center, particularly the center door. So that it, because of the original uh, would have had much heavier framing. I don't think it has to be as heavy as the original in any way, but I feel that this just looks to me extremely light and somewhat inappropriate. Uh, just, it, it doesn't from my okay. point of view have enough historical reference and I think they could do uh, more in that direction with some fairly minor changes and still having a lot of open expanse for their storefront. Because uh, they're okay. not suggesting right. you know, extremely heavy, but, but you know, uh, heavier. Okay. So I mean, I think that the approach was to do something light and minimalist that was set, you know, because it's set so far behind the openings mm -hmm. and, um, and to allow it to sort of clean up and allow you to read the masonry better. So I think some commissioners were okay with that. But um, so I just want to understand how much you'd want them to actually thicken up that framing as it may affect others. I the direction that, that others are supporting. The other thing for me is, is I'd actually like to see the middle uh, frame the, in other words, they've taken, they, by taking the uh, upper, changing the upper transom, they've changed the whole sort of proportions of how that's working. And to me, all three should work in the same fashion and so that you have the verticals coming down in a, a similar location. And I, I don't, do you, do you see what okay. I'm talking about? I do, I do. They're in a different plane, but I do see in elevation, you'd like to have that relationship. That, okay. That's, that's yeah, I, I feel that that would be more reflective of the historic configuration, uh, but. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, I think their approach is to do something like a, a minimal wall that doesn't, re doesn't read like the historic fabric because it's in, such a uh, setback location behind the original location of the storefronts. Yeah, I understand okay. that, sir. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Goldblum. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with the um, general design of the proposed uh, wall in, in the location where it is. Um, I think that the loggia idea, once it's set back like that, it's so divorced from the original configuration that I feel less compelled about um, trying to recall that historic uh, facade. But um, I think I think in general, it's okay. I think we should take them up on their offer to uh, change the color on the residential entrance. <laughs> now, it'll at least calm it down and quiet it down. And I think that Anne's ideas is great about getting rid of those arch, those stone inner arches or whatever they're made out of. <laughs> the one thing that I would uh, suggest to the applicant as, a, as an extra, not that we can request it, uh, require it, is that central, the central arched window that, that uh, is uh, bronze, uh, bronze anodized aluminum, that's the one place where the historic material, in my opinion, should be replaced. Uh, and I, I don't believe they're changing the scope there, so I don't think we can ask them to do that or require them to do that, but I would strongly urge them <laughs> to take that center window uh, and make that similar to the historic configuration uh, that was you see to the left and right of it. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Devonshire. Thank you, Sarah. I'm, I'm generally in agreement with this, but I, I also agree with Ann Holford Smith about the, that sort of extraneous infill. And I agree with Michael about the, that uh, arched transom. Okay, Commissioner Sarah, Chen. Yeah, yes. Di Diana wants to say something. I go first. Yes, Diana. Yeah, I just meant that that's that's what I meant as well. Uh, the the arched window. When I was referring to okay. the trans, thinking of it as a transom. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Chen. Yeah, I'm in agreement with most of the comment, including the one from uh, Commissioner Gustafson. Okay, and Commissioner Land. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with uh, 
with, with the whole uh, notion and concept of this um, proposal, uh, it's set so far back, which I accept as a given at this point, um, that it's a different um, architectural uh, vocabulary. And I think that's appropriate. We've, we've done this a lot. I just also want to note, you know, there's a kinetic enjoyment of architecture, which um, means that a lot of these alignments that one sees and, and, and tears apart in, a, in an elevation are completely unreadable, unknowable in actuality. Uh, so we would never know what's happening over on the left-hand side unless it's right against, you know, as a, as a window, as it, as it once was, and then important. Now it's not important since it's so, so far back. But I think it's fine the way it is. I accept the, the, the couple of comments too that have been added as, as good ideas. <clears throat> All right, great, thank you. And Commissioner Lutfi? I think I have a different feeling about this than everybody. Um, is, this, is this building a landmark? Yes, it is. It's an individual it landmark. I guess I feel like when you're looking at the front of any significant building, um, architecturally, and you're going to be making changes <laughs> to entrances and, and mm -hmm. windows, that it's important to look at the whole thing holistically. And we have a lot of building owners that come to us and they do that. They, they give us master plans. They show us how things are going to look, even if they phase them in over time. This is uh, an important enough building so that I feel this particular uh, owner uh, really owes it to the building and, and to, uh, to show us that. And, and I feel that what we've gotten is a hodgepodge and, and I just don't accept that. And I'm surprised we're accepting that. We wouldn't accept it from Rockefeller Center. We wouldn't ex accept it from so many landmark buildings in this city. So I would vote no against this. Okay. All right. So, I mean, I think what's different here is because it is set back in this unusual location that people have been comfortable with it, the, the change it's proposed. And I think also the applicant did indicate that the other side would eventually match this. So the approval, if not a formal master plan, would establish for the record that this is what it what ha needs to happen on the other side when it is when that side is changed. I or they'd have to come back to a public hearing. Right. I appreciate that, but um, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, I think where we are is that we have many commissioners and, and maybe enough um, for an approval today for um, to, for an approval with modifications to approve the the uh, proposed infill in concept, um, but with some modifications to the color at the residential entrance, cleaning up the sort of inner arched soffit, and um, and you know and uh, I think with the intention that this would serve as the model for the other portions. And um, finally, you know, encouraging while not a required modification, the replacement of the center uh, arched window. So Commissioner Goldblum, would you make this motion? So really the modifications are the color and the, um, the soffits and inner arch, cleaning up the soffits and inner arches. And then we'll also encourage them to to think about this as a master plan and think about that arched window. Okay. <laughs> Regarding 17 Battery Place, the Whitehall Building, an individual landmark, um, the application is to replace entrance infill. Uh, I note that the modifications to the entrance, including installing recessed infill stairs and railings, was performed pursuant to a building department permit issued prior to designation and that the designation report notes that the construction was ongoing at the Eastern commercial entrance. I recommend approval with modifications, finding that the proposed work will not eliminate or conceal any significant architectural features, 
that the proposed infill will be installed in the same plane as the existing recessed infill, entrance infill, set back from the masonry facade, thereby helping it remain a subordinate presence, that the profiles, details, and proportions of the infill featuring tall revolving doors flanked by single doors and a metal, glass, metal and glass curtain wall with horizontal and vertical mullions will be compatible with the historic proportions of the ground floor while clearly reading as a contemporary installation that the removal of a portion of the dropped soffit in front of the doors will return a consistent ceiling height at this recessed vestibule, which will provide uniformity, that the dark bronze anodized finish of the new infill and refinished stair railings will be in keeping with existing and historic metal finish at this building, <clears throat> and that the work will not detract from the special architectural and historic character of this individual landmark. However, the applicant will work with staff to, <clears throat> one, um, uh, change the color of the un otherwise untouched residential entrance metals to match the proposed new color, the dark bronze. <clears throat> Two, to remove the uh, inner archway additions, the modern inner archway additions at the two uh, entrances with stairs. Three, that the applicant will uh, work with the staff to um, uh, view the work that's being done on the two entrances under consideration as a master plan for the third, uh, the residential entrance that is not now being significantly modified. And lastly, the applicant will, uh, the, the applicant will consider uh, the possibility of replacing the uh, arched central second floor window to match those to either side of it. Okay, and Commissioner Chapin, would you second that motion? Second. Okay, Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Nay. And Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. Now, I don't believe that Commissioner Shamir Barron is in the meeting again, right? She's I don't see her correct. Hand. Okay. Yeah. So, with nine in favor, uh, one opposed, and one not present, the motion carries. Okay. So, that's approved with those modifications. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And we'll move to the last item of the day public hearing item number four, LPC 19 39. 118, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 587, lot 21. 61 7th Avenue South in the Greenwich Village Historic District Extension 2. Two altered row houses originally built uh, in 1832. The application is to modify an opening and install a ramp. And commissioners, um, the uh, applicants and um, have joined the hearing. Um, staff will be walking through this proposal um, with some additional statements and availability for questions from the applicants. Good afternoon, commissioners, Emma Waterloo Preservation staff. The application before you today is for 61 7th Avenue South, located at the southeast corner of the intersection of 7th Avenue South and Bleecker Street in the Greenwich Village Historic District Extension 2. This is an existing condition photograph of the building. The proposal is to widen an entrance on the Bleecker Street facade located over here and install a barrier-free access ramp. The restaurant owner would like to say a few words before I take you through the details of this proposal. Um, Mr. Burke, if you could make sure that you are unmuted and state your name for the record, you can begin. Thank you. Mr. Burke, I believe you are muted. A second. All right, can you hear us now? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, here you go. Howard. Okay. Sorry, that was my wife. Um, my name is Howard Burke. Um, I built the restaurant in 1983. We've been there for, I guess it's 37 years. Um, we are here today as applicants 
based on um, several ADA litigations, lawsuits. One is pending currently. Um, it's been going on for over two years. Um, we've tried to research and find the, the most viable solution for this problem so that we can comply with these, um, all the ADA re regulations. Um, my architect, Kim Sippel, will speak. He'll give the technical side of the presentation uh, and he'll, he'll underscore the efforts that we use to research and develop the, the, the best possible solution for this problem. Um, if I can, if I can um, put any more uh, further light on this during the presentation, please get me back. All right, thank you, Mr. Burke. Thank you, guys. Bye. Yes. The following are a selection of existing conditions photographs, as well as historic photographs of the building illustrating its evolution over time. By the time of the 1980s tax photograph, most of the original features had been stripped. And here's the designation photograph of the building. As a reminder, this is a site plan of the building and the work will occur on the Bleecker Street facade over here. And now we are walking around to the Bleecker Street facade and this is a detailed shot of the entrance to be modified. Here are the existing and proposed plans. The door will be widened 16 inches to help accommodate the side light and the turning radius for the proposed ramp. The walking surface of the ramp will be a gray fiberglass so that it can hinge to provide access to the existing basement hatch and the sidewalk at this location. So here's the existing conditions elevation as well as the proposed conditions elevation. The proposed door will match the design of the previously approved door on 7th Avenue South, and the railing will match the grill work at the door in terms of design. For reference, here is a photograph of that door that already exists on 7th Avenue South. And here is the materials palette for the proposal. The architect, Kim Sippel, is here to discuss the location of the ramp and answer any of your questions. Mr. Sippel? Uh, hopefully you can all hear me. I'll do my best to explain this. Um, yeah, we're really trying to work as a balancing act and be sensitive to, I think, which is a really important corner to the village and also to Bleecker Street. We looked at all possible locations for a ramp and uh, because of the sloping sidewalks and that the the first floor of the existing restaurant, it varies from 15 inches to 22 inches above the grade. This ended up being the, the least obtrusive place we could do. So we're trying to do this balancing act. The building is considered a non-contributing building to the district. Um, what we are trying to do is create a unified base, if I can say that, to, to try and make it feel like it's part of the area. Um, the sidewalk at that point in Bleecker Street is 12 feet wide. And by enlarging the opening, which takes it back to the original uh, pier on the side, uh, it allows us to set back the turning radius and therefore no DOT revocable consent requirements kick in for us. Uh, there are no encumbrances in that area as far as street trees or signs or meters or anything. Um, we, Mr. Burke does not allow um, deliveries after 11 a.m. So again, when the traffic picks up around lunchtime, there would never be anybody trying to deliver things to the sidewalk hatch and, and so on. Um, yes, I, I think it's... Just simply, we're trying to find a solution to, you know, be sensitive to the Disabilities Act uh, while being sensitive to the building. And we've done our best and we'll look forward to your comments and, and any ideas you can do to help us. So we appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. And commissioners, do we have any questions? 
And like maybe we could go to the elevation or the, the rendered. So modifying the opening to add the side light and the ramp and the railing. Okay, Commissioner Chapin, please go ahead. Yeah, I just had a question about it. It looks sort of like a picket fence uh, type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, fencing. And I wondered if it could be simpler than that, just a, sort of more like a pipe rail or something, or is that a requirement uh, for the uh, amount, the height of that particular ramp? Um, the height requirement, yes, it's a guardrail. So it's 42 inches above the, the platform on the, and the ramp level. Uh, and then it's 15 inches off the grade, so it, it looks taller there. And then it follows the slope of the handrail coming down. Um, there is, uh, I guess, different ideas that keeping it simpler. Uh, a lot of the code says you're supposed to have less than four inches of space for someone to fall through the guardrail. Um, some people, I, I honestly don't know the exact code of if you can get away with that. We actually provided an appendix with pictures of ramps throughout the village um, and they vary tremendously. Um, so we looked at all sorts of them, uh, you know, from the new school where you have one going down, all these ramps that fill in the infill with like screens and mesh, uh, the new school, which has the very, or the Parsons with the kind of modern look, the building right next door to it has the pickets. Um, so, and then there's the city and country school. And to me, I, after living in the village for 10 years, I loved all the railings and the beautiful ironwork that you see throughout the village. And um, I've worked and talked with the uh, preservationists extensively. And it was kind of my, forcefulness that said, if we do these small uh, iron pickets, uh, they kind of in a rusted color that they would hopefully disappear and unify the base while providing safety um, as the guardrail. Um, yeah, or I'm trying to walk a, like I said, a sensitive line of rather than having this industrial um, ramp, trying to tie it in a little bit with the character of the building and the restaurant. And that's was the design idea behind it. Thank you. That's a very clear exposition of uh, your, uh, your design choice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And Commissioner Jefferson. Commissioner Jefferson, you're still muted if you can just accept that request to unmute. Okay, when I saw this last night, I thought, gee, interesting composition, trying to keep the horizontal with the vertical linear uh, composition in the doorway. Then I realized that the doorway is set back and it's really in shadow. So all I would be seeing is just the, the handrail by itself. And, and it could be fine, but I, I think you could take a look at that because you're not really seeing the vertical and the doors because they're so far back. It's what they would be in shadow most of the time. Okay. And, and just a follow up to the two previous questions in terms of your design, what, were you, what was your thinking about bringing the ironwork down in front of the face of the ramp instead of just onto the top of the ramp? Um, I guess it, to make it feel more solid coming down, yet it would allow them to clean underneath and not have it totally solid under there where it can accumulate garbage or and creatures can wander around under there. So it was just kind of this screen because the actual ramp will be very thin, about two inches. And yeah, it was an architectural like vocabulary to to keep it light if I, and try, I mean, and do our best to hopefully make this disappear as much as possible. Um, that's again, that's what we're shooting for. Okay. 
Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? All right, not seeing any questions at this time, we'll move to public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. And I'll now turn it over to Anthony Fabre to walk us through the testimony. Okay, um, we have one sign up and um, he's the only person raising his hand. So I'll bring in John. John, you should be in the meeting. Good afternoon, commissioners. John Graham for the Victorian Society. Uh, we think that this proposal is a reasonable solution for providing an access ramp for this much altered building. However, we suggest that because the drop from the top of the ramp to sidewalk level is only a few inches, the railing height could be lowered to a handrail level and the vertical pickets could be eliminated. This would result in a more transparent and less visible structure. In other circumstances, a ramp railing design might take its cues from other ironwork on a building, but in this case, there is none. So we believe simpler and more transparent is better. Thank you very much, commissioners. Okay. Um, there is no one else raising their hand to testify. Okay, thank you. And Rich, do we have any written testimony? We do have a resolution from Manhattan Community Board too, and they recommend that approval. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, any final comments that w from the applicant team on this after hearing the testimony? Um, I don't know if Mr. Burke has any comments. Um, yeah, I, thank you. Go Dad. ahead. Kim, I don't Mr. know. Mr. Burke, would you? I, go, go ahead, Howard. Um, I have no comments. I just wanted to thank okay. everyone. That's it. Uh, and my comment would be, I mean, um, I understand the idea of transparency, but even when you have fewer pickets and these big pipe, larger pipe rails, uh, to me, it starts to look more industrial and, and loses the, the character that uh, kind of a rhythm of materials creates. And again, um, uh, that's what we were shooting for. I mean, I'm open to suggestions. I believe architecture is collaborative and uh, <laughs> we would love to work with you to make it the best we can for the village. The, so we're walking that that sensitive line, like, like we said. So we appreciate everything. Great, thank you very much. Any final questions, commissioners? I just right, want to I'm starting. I just want to commend the applicant for dealing with this, uh, this uh, sticky issue because EDA issues is becoming a very prevalent problem. And I agree with the statement about the base plate, uh, rodents can even. Oh, well, we, we just lost you. We didn't hear the last part of what you said. Okay. Uh, the last part is our base, bringing the base all the way down uh, because even with a quarter of an inch, a rodent can hide in there. So it is a practical and logical move. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So we'll um, make a motion to close the hearing. Commissioner Shamir Barron, would you make that motion? So moved. Can you hear me? And thank you. Yes. Commissioner Holford Smith, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the hearing is now closed and we'll begin our discussion. Um, and this is a, a, a building I'm sure many of you are familiar with right on the intersection of 7th Avenue South and Bleecker Street, stripped of many of its details and really part of the kind of commercial character of, of 7th Avenue South. Um, so, the changes here, I think, are more about the uh, character of the streetscape in some ways than its relationship to the building. But let's have a full discussion on the proposed ramp and uh, modification to the door. And let's see how people are feeling about simplicity versus not. Um, and why don't we start with Commissioner Chapin? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Well, I, I found the architect's, uh, you know, ex explanation of, of his choice interesting. 
um, because as, as was noted, there are a lot of different ways to approach ramps and, you know, we're maybe often looking at trying to get one that's the most transparent. I actually think that given that this building is, you know, it's lost most of its character that having, um, you're not really impeding your view by using this sort of picket fence approach and you know, perhaps it does fit in a little better with the village. Uh, so I think I'm okay with uh, the approach he's taken, though I do think that bringing the fence down to the street seems, and so it's, it's just very unusual. I can't think of an instance where I've seen that. So I think that might, unfortunately, kind of call attention to itself just by looking a little odd. So I'd like to hear what other commissioners say about that. But okay. as far as the approach, I can accept that. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Goldblum? I'm actually fine with it as it is. I mean, I do think it's a little odd that they carried the railings all the way down to the ground almost. And I think that they'll regret it because it's gonna probably rust out in a fairly short period of time. But <laughs> I mean, I just, as a kind of summary of the day, it's kind of a, an interesting way to end an interesting day. <laughs> <laughs> where I think the, theme, the theme of the day would be New York's a bitch, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Here are these guys that get sued for uh, ADA, and now they got to deal with, uh, you know, the landmarks, and, yeah, uh, you know, on top of the other stuff we saw today, <laughs> it's tough, you know? It, and then you got the gate and the fiberglass. Yeah, how much cleverness do you have to pack into a little ramp? But uh, I think I think it's fine as is, and and uh, I, I would think it's appropriate and I'd vote for it. Okay, Commissioner Devonshire. I don't think it's a problem at all because it'll always be disguised by the taxi cab that's continually <laughs> the street in front of. I can go with it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Commissioner Chen. I agree with the two Michaels. Okay, Commissioner Bland. Yeah, there's definitely been a theme of the day. Uh, <laughs> Um, and the day is now nearing the end. Thank goodness. <laughs> a long day, even though it's not supposed to be so long. Uh, I'm fine with it as it's been presented. Okay. Commissioner Lutfi. First of all, I want to I want to say to the applicant, applicant that I really appreciate all of the time and energy you took to think about your approach and um, it, thank you for sharing it. Overall, I think that the approach is good. I think I would, I would actually not have the, uh, not have the, uh, not have it go all the way to the street. I would put it on top into the uh, uh, base, and I might lower it just a bit. Okay, Commissioner Jefferson. Um, I can approve it. Okay. Commissioner, uh, I think Commissioner Gustafson is gone. So Commissioner Holford, uh, Commissioner Shamir Barron, excuse me. Yes, I'm sorry. I came late to it, but I think I caught enough. And um, I think I agree with the commissioners that, who have spoken thus far. And, I, and you know, I, the, the rail seems a little strange, but I can approve it as it's proposed. Okay. All right, thanks. And Commissioner Holford Smith? Yeah, I agree with most of the other comments. And I just want to um, applaud the applicant for coming up with a really ingenious way to incorporate this ramp at this location. Probably the only location he could put it had to be over the, the, the access door to the, the sidewalk hatch. And so I think it was a really clever solution. Okay, all right. All right, so we've made it around. Commissioner Chapin, I know you had some concerns about the 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 railing going over the ramp to the sidewalk and many commissioners were okay with it. Have you come around to thinking about that differently? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I can approve it as presented. Okay, all right. So then would you make the motion, Commissioner Chapin? Yes. In the matter of a certificate of appropriateness for Manhattan, LPC 1939 11 7th Avenue, South Greenwich Village Historic District, Extension 2. 
Two altered row houses originally built in 1832. Application is to modify an opening and install a ramp. Uh, I note that the building's facades were altered several times prior to designation that the building occupies an unusual angular lot, the result of 7th Avenue South cutting through the off access street grid of the district between 1914 and 1917, and that 7th Avenue South is lined with buildings of various types, sizes, and shapes, some with contemporary additions that contribute to the multi-layered context of the streetscape in the historic district. I recommend approval, finding that the modern door and stucco-clad infill to be removed are not significant architectural features and will facilitate barrier-free access to the commercial mm -hmm. ground floor. That the modified door opening featuring a wood uh, do door with ironwork will be consistent with the historic commercial character of 7th Avenue South and Bleecker Street and will match the entrance door at the 7th Avenue South. That the proposed ramp featuring light gray fiberglass grading will be in keeping with the surrounding concrete paving in terms of finish and will allow access to a sidewalk catch without drawing undue attention to the installation. And that the proportions, scale, and placement of the proposed ramp will not overwhelm or detract from the significant uh, architectural features or proportions of this corner building. All right, and Commissioner Shamir Barrett. Baron, would you second that motion? Second the motion. All right, and Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson's gone for the day. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. And Commissioner Holford-Smith? Aye. Okay, with 10 in favor, none opposed, and one not present, the motion carries. Okay, so that's approved. Thank you very much, and good luck. Thank you. And thank commissioners, you. That, can, that concludes our day. Again, thank you all for your hard work and long hours and dedication, as always. We, it's great for the city, and even when we have items that are not as interesting as some of the bigger projects we see. It's, these are important projects that all contribute to our city. So thank you for that commitment. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, see you next.